Our first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to allow my husband to apologize to our daughter for ruining her life? My daughter, 19, is going through a tough time. On top of the obvious difficulties of the pandemic, she has been struggling with depression. Her classes are all online, so she lives with us. My husband and I are both working from home, so we are very involved with her day to day. We do our best to engage her, family walks, game night, cooking together, but she is still feeling pretty down. She sees a therapist online, but I'm not privy to how that is going. In the last couple days, she has been displaying a lot of resentment over her childhood. I'm specifically talking about ages 12 to 14. During those years, her father, my husband, was diagnosed with prostate cancer and was going through aggression chemo. He has recovered enough to live a normal life. I won't lie, those were very tough years for our family. My daughter is an only child and was used to our full attention and engagement. It was a hard transition for her to have her father not be able to care for her like he used to and myself having to split my time between her and my husband. We had a lot of support from our family and we were able to maintain her lifestyle with her help. She didn't have to quit any teams, she never missed school. I do acknowledge that emotionally, there was damage, so we did family therapy for years. Yesterday, she was in a bad mood. During dinner, I asked her what was going on and she went into this explosive rant about how many issues she developed due to us. Apparently, we are responsible for her grades slipping, her relationships failing, her weight gain, etc. She tied it all back to her missing crucial development during the years where her father had cancer. At one point, she says something like, Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you should apologize? You basically deprived me of my childhood. My husband says, I'm sorry, honey. I could have done better, and I could have done more for you. I shut that down and told her, No, you are not going to guilt trip your father into apologizing for having cancer. This is unacceptable. You need to accept that life is not fair, and there is very little we can do about it. Go to your room and calm yourself down. She told me to go F myself and went to her room. My husband and I have been arguing about how this was handled. He thinks that an apology is not a big deal, and he was hurt by what she said but that he could take it. I think that she's looking for someone to blame for her current unhappiness and that we, as her parents, are easy targets. I also know that my husband already feels a great deal of guilt for putting our family through so much turmoil. I love my daughter and want her to be happy. At the same time, I do believe she is at an age where she needs to take on personal accountability. Am I the a-hole here? Edit. I am shocked by the amount of comments and cannot read them all. Thanks to everyone who commented, and double thanks to those that awarded a post. I do want to say that, while the concern for my daughter's mental health is encouraging, there is a rather harsh dismissal of my husband's mental health here. As a society, I think men are expected too much to just suck it up and take it on the chin. My husband struggles still with his health, the possibility of cancer returning, and his own depression. I value my daughter's mental health, don't get me wrong, but I don't value it above my husband's. I thought what she said was extremely damaging to him, and I reacted to that. I do regret the harshness, but not the message. Now let's read the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your daughter is an adult, and as you said, needs to learn that life is not fair. Your husband did not choose to get cancer, or the timing of it. Depression is awful, and I'm glad your daughter is seeing a counselor, but it may be worth her visiting her doctor and seeing if there is more that can be done. Hang in there, mama, but do not feel guilty or let your husband feel guilty either. I totally agree with your great comment. It's time for the daughter to grow up. She's 19 and acting like a 14-year-old. She sounds very entitled to the point of satire. I mean, expecting an apology for not being the center of attention while her father has cancer? This is like an example from a textbook about narcissism and entitlement. This is what I was thinking, selfish and possibly very spoiled previously. I would have an extremely difficult time letting a 19-year-old tell me to F myself, then proceed to stay in my house. She can F herself right over to a friend's couch for a week. That is insanely disrespectful behavior. She definitely seems entitled, especially if she feels her dad needs to apologize for having cancer. Half a glass empty much? At least, she didn't lose her dad. Not the a-hole. Your daughter needs to learn to take responsibility for her own crap instead of blaming others, especially when it's something out of everyone's control and the fact that she is so entitled at 19 that she thinks she is owed an apology for her dad fighting for his life against cancer is a really bad sign for how she will handle adult problems. Point out to your husband that letting your daughter think that the world owes her crap will mess her up in the real world. So learning to accept that crap happens and no one owes her anything when it does is an important lesson that she needs to learn. 
She should look into more therapy. This OP, this. Your daughter's entitlement is what is, slash, has set her up for failure. She's going to have a rude awakening when she realizes she won't always have her parents to blame. And for the second story, am I the a-hole for telling my sister-in-law to stop pushing her BS off on my relationship? My sister-in-law is in her late 30s. Myself and my husband, her brother, are both 26. I have been married to him for going on 6 years, and we have been together since the end of freshman year of high school. Very briefly, we stayed with her. I think we moved in when we were 19 and we left about 6 months later when we bought our first home. Throughout the entire time we were there, she did nothing but crap all over my husband. She was constantly speaking horribly of him because of the decisions he made before we started dating. She continuously told me to watch my back because she feared for my happiness and fear that he would crap me over. Needless to say, my husband has been fantastic to me since the very beginning. So, I had dealt with this for a while. Had multiple discussions with my husband and he basically just wanted to leave it alone. He chalked it up to her just being a negative person due to her marriage slowly failing. He refuses to help her with anything, but he also goes about it like she has never said anything. His way of coping, I guess. Last weekend, we were invited over for a barbecue. A few family members showed up that I had yet to meet. However, my sister-in-law at one point started bashing my husband in front of everyone the second that he walked away to go help her son with something that she refused to help him with. Her comments range from him being a terrible husband to having zero work ethic. He has been with the same company for almost seven years. The whole family was tuned in, listening to her bash him and not one person spoke up. I was trying desperately to do as he wanted and just leave it alone but her final comment of he will always be a nobody really stuck a nerve. I looked at her and said, do you not have anything better to do with your life? Do you seriously think that anyone wants to hear you openly bash a man who has done nothing to you, your own brother no less? The family fell silent and my sister-in-law was just gawking at me. This is the first time I have spoke out of line. She finally said something like, I know him better than you. You seem to forget that. So I said, well, say it to his face then, instead of being freaking to face and pushing your BS off on me or any of us for that matter. Where is your husband? Why are we not discussing that he doesn't even hang out at a family barbecue or sleep in the same bed anymore? She stormed away from the table after telling me that my disrespect was disgusting. Apparently, she was crying in the bathroom when my mother-in-law found her. Everyone in the group started saying things like, Is she always like this? Or, He seems like a damn good man to me. Or, Yeah, where is Chris anyways? Chris is sister-in-law's husband. So, needless to say, everyone was on my side except my other sister-in-law, who has gone to great measures to make sure I know that she now freaking hates me and thinks I'm a dumpsy. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments of this post. Not the a-hole, you the boss. That was murder by facts. You spilled the tea and she is just witched up. Congrats for finally unmasking the monster for all to see. You done good. Fact decide. Not the a-hole. Good for you for sticking up for your husband. I can't imagine putting my sibling down like that. We certainly tease each other, but man, that was brutal. I know, right? I can't imagine doing this stuff to anyone, but your own brother? Way not the a-hole. I'm glad you stood up for him, OP. Honestly, I kind of hate my brother most of the time, but I would never openly bash him in front of others. General rule of thumb, if someone is terrible, they will make that evident to others in their own. They don't usually need your help to do it. Why are you even asking this? For defending your husband when he isn't even there to defend himself? Not the a-hole. The only reason I feel like I'm an a-hole is because my husband told me specifically that he just wanted to leave it alone and act like she isn't saying anything. He didn't want to add fuel to the fire. So, I basically went against his wishes and spoke up anyways. I feel bad for not sticking to what he wanted. And now for the final story. Am I the a-hole for banishing my sister and brother-in-law? My sister married a real bum. I really don't like him. He's six years older than her but doesn't have a job. Is dismissive to her emotions. I've witnessed this myself. He's lazy, doesn't clean and is generally an unpleasant person for me. I try to avoid him like a plague. At the start of lockdown, my sister got her hours at work reduced. That meant she couldn't afford a full rent alone because her bum husband doesn't contribute a cent. We as family help her out as much as she could. In June, it got too much and she asked me to stay with myself and my husband. 
I really, really, really was against this because, as stated, I don't like her husband. But my sister was in a bind, so I eventually agreed, after discussing it with my husband. We'll let them use the left wing of the house as their own, for sleeping, studying, relaxing. And the kitchen and common areas were also theirs to indulge. Since the very first day they moved in, there has been a disgusting mess in my house. Dishes left unwashed, food left off the floor, empty packets piling up on the counters. Note, we have a helper, but her job priority is looking after the kids, and the mess is too much for her to juggle. My husband and I tried speaking to them to keep it tidy, and it only lasted a day until it went right back to crap. So I have now officially confined them to the guest room of our house, which is technically outside. It has its own entrance and bathroom, but no kitchen. I've informed them that until they can keep my house clean, they are not allowed in my house. My bum brother-in-law feels this is unfair because they can't use the kitchen or TV room or any other space in my home. They also have two kids and my nephew is attached to his father, so they have to share that guest room with the children, where previously, the kids were using the bunk beds in my child's room. I don't feel like an a-hole, I don't even feel guilty. But my husband firmly believes in doing the most for family, so he thinks we should not banish them to the outside room. I think their habits are disgusting and no amount of talking to has worked. So they must stay there until they can learn to function like actual adults. Edit. I think I might be an a-hole because I'm making my sister suffer for the actions of her husband. She works, so I sort of understand why she can't clean constantly, but he doesn't. Yet, they're getting the same punishment. Now let's read the top comments. Not the a-hole. That's fair. It's also still pretty generous. If I was unemployed and someone banished me to a rent-free, standalone guest room with bathroom, I'd be pretty thrilled. You probably don't leave disgusting messes everywhere, though. So, just so I understand this, you took an entire family of four into your home who pay nothing in rent or utilities. Not only do they do nothing to help with upkeep and maintenance, they actually trash the place. Talking to them has been unavailing. So, instead of evicting them, you pushed them out to the guest house and told them that until they can learn how to clean up after themselves, they would not be allowed in the house. Is that it? Not the a-hole. I would have evicted their ungrateful behinds and throw them out into the streets without a second thought. It is a shame about your sister. I wonder what circumstances conspired to make her think she couldn't do better than this shiftless man she married. You'd think that, since he doesn't work, would at least learn how to keep up a house. If it were me, I'd let my sister in the main house if she can be respectful of the space, and the kids if they are old enough and can understand how to keep it clean. Keep the trash husband in the yard. No change is likely from him, but you don't have to throw the rest of the family out with him. Not the a-hole. Personally, I will also look into tenants' law in your area. You don't want to be stuck with them, even with them just living in a guest room, forever. Especially that bum brother-in-law. Not the a-hole. You are now technically a landlord and they are always a-holes, but due to necessity. If you are the owner of the property, then you can designate the house rules. I would recommend a contract and rent be signed. If not, then have a 30-day notice of eviction written up and email to different sources for a trail. This sucks, but sometimes life is the a-hole. That's the end of the video, guys. Share us your thoughts down in the comment section. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.